Hi, my name's John Blair, and I'm going to show you how to create a, a Numbraco plugin. This sample plugin is called Global Trade and will allow you to add products such as uh, books to an existing e commerce site, which currently sells t shirts. I've made the plugin extendable, allowing for multiple product categories. In this case, I've configured the plugin for books and cameras. For each category, I've configured the back office to support uh, multiple tabs to separate different aspects of maintaining a product category. So let's crack on. Okay, the agenda for this course uh, is an overview of the plugin from a back office user's perspective, and then an overview from a developer's perspective. We'll then dive into the detail of how you organize your code. We'll, we'll look at the plugin project structure. Uh, finally, we'll, we'll cover a couple of changes to the Umbrico website uh, to support the plugin. Okay, so what are the prerequisites required for this course? Well, some of the technologies that would be useful to help you create a plugin are AngularJS, as the back office is largely built using this technology, so an appreciation of uh, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS is desirable. The plugin framework uh, is created using a .NET C# -sharp library. Uh, the plugin database is managed by SQL Server and accessed using Petapoco. Uh, not a choice. Uh, SQL Server is the database environment. Obviously, local DB, the SQL Server Management Studio, can easily be used to migrate the database to SQL Azure. Have the live version of this plugin uh, in Azure. A general understanding of the Umbraco CMS is assumed. Gulp was also used as a post solution build tool to create the plugin directory structure to allow a simple copy of the plugin into the Umbraco website. The plugin was developed in Visual Studio but mapped to an IIS website for easy viewing in the browser when you don't have the project loaded in Visual Studio. The IIS site and SQL Server database uh, is then copied to an Azure website which hosts the live release. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick uh, overview of the plugin. The overviews get two parts. First, we'll start with an overview of the plugin from a user's perspective. This consists of a tour of the back office to see the plugin, how it's organized to maintain a list of book products. We'll then take a look at the content section and page creation to use the plugin, uh, adding the page to site navigation and viewing the page on the site. The second part of this overview is a developer overview uh, we'll take a look at the Visual Studio solution and the plugin project just from a high level view initially. Um, for the slides, we'll, we'll dive into the detail of the plugin project. Okay, let's uh, take a look at the plugin from the Umbrico back office. You'll see down the left hand side the number of sections that are configured into Umbrico. Uh, we've added this plugin which is Global Trade. Uh, it's, uh, it's part of an e-commerce site and uh, this plugin looks to extend the functionality of that site by offering books for sale, uh, possibly cameras and possibly anything else that uh, uh, springs to mind. So let's take a look at the, the plugin. Uh, you'll see on the left we have the product categories configured. In this case, uh, the tree is just configured for books and cameras. On the right, 
this is the dashboard for the, the plugin uh, configured in the dashboard.config file. Company has two tabs configured the welcome tab and the settings for the plugin. The settings tab uh, tends to have any global settings for your, your plugin, uh, things like uh, choice of language, uh, date formats, currency formats, uh, uh, anything along those lines uh, you tend to configure in a, a settings tab. Uh, let's take a look at the, the more interesting part which is the, the, the products that we're maintaining in this case, uh, books. So what we generally have is for any any product in the tree uh, we configure the the number of tabs that we want displayed in this case three catalog events author bios uh, what we have is uh, in terms of angular we have scaffolding directives that take care of the whole look of the, the tab. And then we have tab specific directives that take care of the content. In this case, we have a single directive, GT books, that take care of the CRUD operations for maintaining books. So, uh, we'll, uh, we'll exercise the CRUD operation. So let, let, let's create a, a, a new book. Uh, and you'll see there's some uh, basic validation uh, in these tabs. Uh, anything with a pink background shows it's currently invalid. So uh, let's create a new book. Uh, plugins and we'll sell that uh, for two pence and I created this a while ago so uh, let's update the date so we can save that and we can see that our, our new plugin uh, our new uh, plugin book is uh is going to be offered on the site uh it's just looking a bit cheap so we can edit that uh let's boost our fortunes by uh making it uh, 20 pounds yeah quite expensive uh but uh there you go so that's uh that uh, let, let's show you the uh, Umbrico dialogues that are built in so uh, uh, I've added a, a dialogue to any delete operation just so that you can get a confirmation uh, on whether you want to delete a book or not you can cancel out that uh, or you can uh, proceed and delete it and you'll see that it's gone from the, the main catalog. Um, so that's the back end. So you, you'll see we've uh, configured our new Umbrico plugins book uh, for sale. Let's, uh, let's show you that on the site then. So when we take a look at uh, the main site, you'll see I've just reused the logo for the, the plugin and in my menu, I have a, I have the content page for books. So that just lists the books and offers. And there you'll see is our uh, new Umbrico plugins book, uh, ready for the mass market. Okay, let's uh, take a look at some code now. Uh, this is uh, my solution for my e-commerce site. Uh, you'll see there's uh, uh, four main projects in it plus a test one. Uh, 
uh, main project is the e-commerce site, the Umbrico e-commerce site itself, uh, which hosts the plugin which I call Global Trade and it's a plugins directory. Uh, then I've got the plugin project itself, Global Trade, and to help our projects, one for error pages, which basically just configures uh, IAS error pages themed according to your site, uh, and the helpers project, uh, which assists with utilities for reading config files, sending email, uh, etc. Uh, but the main project of interest is the EC plugin Global Trade. This is a C Sharp uh, uh, DLL uh, project that uh, was copied into the bin directory of the main e commerce site and uh, the back end Angular stuff. Uh, gets copied into the e-commerce app plugins folder uh, called Global Trade. Uh, the way this project is organized is it uses Gulp uh, to actually build the build directory for the, the plugin. Uh, so it makes installation of the plugin into the e-commerce site a simple copy of the global trade folder uh, into the uh, plugins global trade folder of the, the main website. Uh, so that's so Go produces the the output. Uh, build directory, and we'll look in detail at that uh, in a while. Uh, the main development area for the back office Angular stuff is uh, is uh, performed under the client folder of this plugin. Uh, again, we'll, we'll look at detail of all the individual parts of that uh, in a little while and uh, the third part of this uh, uh, project is the server folder which essentially contains the plugin DLL components and we'll look in detail at all of the, the parts uh, of that in a, a later slide, but that, this is just a, a general overview of the, the code. Uh, so uh, just to recap, the main e-commerce site, which uh, the bin directory will have the, the global trade DLL, and then in its app plugins folder, there will be uh, a directory for global trade. Uh, Gulp will process all the content in the client folder and generate a build directory for the, the plugin. Uh, when you build this the project in Visual Studio, uh, it's mainly the server components will combine to form the DLL that, uh, that is the other main part of the, the plugin. The build folder contains an app plugins folder for the plugin. Uh, we've named this plugin Global Trade. Uh, this folder can simply be copied to the Umbraco website to install the plugin. Uh, the plugin folder contains a package manifest file which tells Umbraco which AngularJS files and plugin CSS to load so you can style your, your back office tabs and tree etc. Uh, the assets folder contains the CSS and media used by the plugin. 
the back office folder contains the AngularJS uh, HTML and directive templates that are used in the back office tree tabs. The JS folder contains the Angular modules. The Lang folder contains translations for a multilingual plugin. Uh, this one's uh, uh, done in done for English, uh, in American English. Uh, but uh, if you wanted to extend the plugin, uh, you'd add your other language, supported language translations uh, in the Lang folder. The lib folder contains uh, third party libraries used by the, the plugin, e.g., uh, ng storage. Uh, you don't need to add uh, libraries like jQuery, uh, which Umbrico uses, it uh, already references those uh, when you load your, your plugin. Uh, other libraries that Umbrico use, like Moment for date time uh, configuration and use, uh, you can also use within your plugin without having to reference separately in the library area. Uh, the build folder was uh, created using Gulp in Visual Studio. Uh, that's a Tash Runner uh, plugin. And in the later slide, we'll take a look at the, the Gulp file just to see uh, how the build folder was uh, generated. Okay, let's take a look at the build folder for the, the plugin. Uh, the build folder is generated by Gulp. There's a Gulp file which identifies all your build tasks, uh, which can be executed in Visual Studio's task runner. So I have a build solution uh, task that uh, creates the, the build folder. I have a higher level task that does a build and then also releases uh, into the live, uh, the live website. So uh, it makes it uh, convenient for testing. You can make a change, just run and build, release live, uh, bring up your website in Chrome and test the, the new feature that that you've added. So if we take a look at the structure of the, the plugin folder, we can see that uh, we create a new folder for the name of your plugin, uh, in this case, Global Trade. It has a package manifest file where you list uh, all the JavaScript and CSS that uh, is required for your plugin and uh, we'll see that uh, when we look at the GUMP file uh, later that uh, uh, we do a lot of combining of JavaScript files uh, into a small set that uh, form the, the plugin. Uh, so for instance, all the individual modules are concatenated into a models file, same for the filters, same for the resources, same for the services, directives uh, and controllers, and uh, same for the CSS uh, in the client folder, which will look, uh, the CSS is developed in uh, a number of folders and a number of less files. Uh, the, the less is uh, compiled in the CSS and then all the CSS is combined to generate a single uh, global trade modified CSS file that is then uh, available uh, across all tabs uh, in the, the back end. So that's the package manifest uh, which uh, Tells Umbraco what to, to load for your, your plugin. If we look at the other directories uh, within the plugin, we see there's an assets folder which basically just contains uh, the CSS 
and any media that uh, that you have in your your plugin. Uh, so as I said, all the CSS gets minified in a single file, and that's loaded as part of the plugin. Uh, you can put whatever media uh, you want in your plugin. Uh, that particular logo PNG is just uh, one that's referenced from the from the, the welcome screen in the dashboard for the the plugin. Uh, then uh, we have our back office folder which contains uh, pretty much the the meat of the the plugin. Uh, this has all the views, the Angular views that that we we reference and all the directive templates that we reference in our plugin. So, uh, for instance, uh, we've already covered the uh, displaying of the dashboard, displaying of the settings tab, uh, confirmation pop-ups, uh, the books catalog. Uh, so, these are uh, these are all the views, that, uh, views and templates that uh, are, are referenced via uh, the Angular. Uh, we then have a JavaScript uh, folder, again referenced from the package manifest, and uh, this contains a, a set of files. Uh, I'll show you that uh, all the controllers in your, your project that you, you get created are wrapped in an FA to keep uh, to keep everything uh, out of the global namespace and if we just scroll through uh, you can just see that all the controllers in your project get concatenated into uh, a single file. Uh, the same happens with uh, the directives. Uh, we uh, we maintain the individual directives as small files like GT books would have its own directive file, but uh, will be concatenated and with uh, any other directives that we've got, so there's a, a hello world uh, type directive, there's uh, scaffolding directives, panel bodies, spinners, uh, etc. So uh, again, in an FA, it keeps keeps the directives uh, uh, functionality out of the global namespace. And what you'll see for all my directives, I give them a GT prefix uh, so that uh, in your HTML you can include uh, this directive just GT dash books. And the idea is uh, using that prefix, it won't conflict with uh, any other vendor's uh, directives or indeed umbricos directives which tend to have UMB as the prefix. Uh, and then the template uh, we tend, uh, as I showed you earlier in the back office, there's the directives subdirectory which uh, contains all the all the directives. Filters follows the, the same pattern. Uh, uh, all the filters are pulled in and wrapped in an FA. Uh, models follows the same pattern. Uh, uh, we'll just uh, focus on one. Uh, so there's the book, which is the product that we are we're looking to maintain. So what We'll create this as a kind of structured JavaScript object. Uh, 
and then add it to the, the models uh, module. Uh, same for tabs, tab collections, uh, and dialogue data. There's, there's a lot of models. Uh, d d don't worry about uh, the detail scrolling off uh, screen. We'll, we'll, we'll look in detail at these later, but just wanted to generally show you that uh, all the models are, are pulled into a single file and this one that we stopped on tabs factory we can see that uh, for the for the books tree node uh, we have three tabs that we set up uh, with the, the urls to the, the angular components and the same for our cameras so uh, if we add any more tree nodes we can just create a new method in here that uh, will uh, list the tabs that we, we want to have for any new product categories and uh, generally uh, the follow revealing module pattern to return a factory method for each of the tab collections. And then uh, we have a, a modules file for the plugin, which is the it's the main bootstrap file for it. Uh, so what we can see in here is that our global trade uh, plugin uh, uses some umbrical filters, directive services. Uh, and is partitioned into its own filters, directives, resources, services, and models, uh, modules. Use a third party and use storage. Uh, and then we list any, well, we create the, the modules and list the dependencies. So, for instance, the resources and services tend to uh, depend on uh, the models. And then uh, uh, we let Umbraco know that uh, our, uh, our plugin exists. Uh, resources follow uh, the same pattern as the others in that all the individual resources get concatenated into MFA. And uh, we'll, we'll look in detail uh, at the resources later, but a quick overview is we have a book resource which uh, uh, communicates with uh, the server uh, books API controller in order to perform uh, the CRUD and we use uh, Umbrico's request helper uh, to actually uh, make the HTTP request and uh, this helper has an error message that uh, can be bubbled up to the, the, the back office front end uh, should, should it fail. Uh, but the general pattern uh, a lot of these uh, resource calls is uh, we'll make the call get on would be an equivalent get on method uh, on the server. Uh, once we get the data back, we'll uh, transform that into uh, an array of books and return that to the, the caller. Uh, so we have get create, update, delete. Uh, we'll see that for create, uh, we're, we're trying to use a RESTful approach. Uh, we'll use post for our create, uh, we'll use the put verb for an update, and we'll use delete, uh, delete the book. Uh, so that's that. And then services, uh, yeah, as I say, uh, a number of kind of helper type uh, methods and uh, they'll get concatenated in, uh, into a single file. 
Then we have a line folder for uh, translations. Uh, this plugin doesn't uh, support translations at the moment, but if it did, then we would just uh, flesh out uh, the content of these files. Uh, the the lib directory has got uh, third party products used, and uh, as we covered, uh, the package manifest. So that's that's an overview of uh, of what uh, what constitutes your your plugin. The server folder within the project contains the server side DLL code. This DLL is added to the Umbrico bin folder. The DLL contains uh, several classes. Uh, there's a class for creating the plugin application section itself. There's a class to model the boot product, which this plugin maintains. It, uh, the model itself is Petaboco annotations for database creation. There's a class to add an event handler to Umbrico, so the book tables created uh, when the plugin starts up, if the table doesn't already exist. There's a controller to create the web API for the book resource. This is used by the Angular JS in the back office tabs for maintenance of the book products, so create, update, delete the, the usual CRUD stuff. And there's a, also a class uh, to create the tree in the, the back office. And that's the, that's the server side. Okay, uh, let's look at the server side code of our plugin. Uh, this is the, the main content of the plugin DLL that goes into the the bin directory of your Umbrico website. And within the plugin project, uh, all the server uh, site functionality is under the server folder. So the first uh, file that we're interested in is the application. Uh, so basically a new section in the, the back end, which I've uh, called uh, global trade uh, we can see that uh, global trade is the name of the, the plugin and i'm using a, an icon uh, a png file for its uh, for its icon display and th this is a file that should exist in the Umbrico tree directory. Uh, if you didn't want to use a PNG file, there are a number of uh, classes that you can enter in here to, to give it a, a look, but uh, I wanted to uh, just display my website's logo in the back, the back office as part of my plugin, uh, so that this uh, achieves it and uh, the number on the end that's the sort order that your plugin will uh, appear in the back end so i just counted how many plugins i had and uh, i prefer my plugin to to stay at the bottom of the screen so i give it a high number 20 and that uh, ensures that uh, uh, it appears uh, at the bottom of the screen so that's uh, that basically creates the, the section. Uh, the next part of the server side is the event handler. Uh, create an application event handler to handle the database side of things. Now. For the database side, I have a single table called uh, books or book that, uh, that stores all the, the book products that I'm interested in. So what we can provide to Umbrico 
is uh, an event handler when Umbrico starts up. Uh, essentially, this will test whether uh, the books table exists and if it doesn't, it will create the, the book table. Uh, take a quick look at the, the book model. Uh, what I decided was uh, I'd stick to the Umbrico uh, method of maintaining database tables, uh, which is Petapoco. I'd considered Entity Framework, but I was concerned about upgrades and clashes between DLLs, etc. Uh, so I thought, well, if I stick with Petapoco, then if I upgrade Umbrico or I upgrade Entity Framework uh, independently, that, that there'll be no clashes uh, or inconsistent DLLs. Uh, so I thought I'd uh, stick with Petapoco. So here we can see that uh, these are Petapoco attributes and uh, we're going to create a, a book table uh, which has got an ID as a primary key that auto increments uh, on insertion. Uh, so we have our ID the book has a title, a price, and a publish date, and uh, we stick attributes on each of these uh, columns. So when the table is created, uh, it's lowercase names, and uh, that's that's basically your your book and your event handler to make sure that that table exists. Uh, Next thing that uh, the server takes care of is the API for your books. So what uh, what we have is a uh, is a books API controller basically, and uh, there's a couple of things uh, worthy of note on here. Plugin the controller attribute, uh, I give it the uh, name of my plugin Global Trade. So this essentially creates a new area for routing of requests. Uh, when they come into this controller, they'll, they'll be routed to the Global Trade area. Uh, JSON Camel case formatter is an interesting one. Uh, what that does is uh, when my web API returns, uh, say, a list of books or a book in itself. Uh, well, the, the C sharp convention when you define a model is uh, they tend to have an, an uppercase, firstly a Pascal case. Uh, whereas JavaScript. Uh, the convention is that uh, all your models have uh, camel case, so a lowercase uh, first letter in the, the property names. So this uh, camel case formatter will ensure that as you return C sharp, uh, Pascal uh, case objects, they'll get converted to uh, camel case objects uh, for sending across the wire and uh, when we look at the JavaScript generic model builder you'll see that that will just push those uh, camel case uh, properties into uh, objects which have been defined with camel case. So that's uh, that formatter. Uh, Typically, for your web API, you'll derive from bracket authorized JSON controller. Um, that will ensure that uh, uh, anyone using this API uh, must be uh, logged in to the, the back end. Uh, I also uh, 
make my controllers uh, or this controller implement a bit repository interface. The reason I do that is uh, uh, this API I like to reuse uh, on the content side. So uh, as we saw in an earlier slide, uh, I display the, the list of books for the, the visitor to purchase. So it uses our, uh, the same API. So I essentially implement uh, a book repository and then use it in both the uh, both uh, con this controller and also in uh, uh, Razor templates for uh, uh, my book section in the content page. So that's that's why it does that repository. And you can see in this controller, uh, basically. Uh, uh, the data access is taken care of by the book repository and uh, this interface just uh, taps into all the methods uh, provided by a repository. So uh, now we create, want to create a book in the back end, uh, we'll expect it to be posted uh, instantly if you if you want to do some debugging, then the uh, simple way is just to use uh, Omnicode's log helper and uh, you can just uh, dump dump items into uh, the existing Omnicode log file, uh, which is uh, quite useful for development. And so we have uh, this controller to care of uh, creating, deleting, book, uh, getting a single book and getting all the book products and updating the book which I'll take, uh, expect the, the put, uh, the put verb. Let me show you there's the camel case formatter so it bins any other formatters like XML quite often gets in the way it's a formatter, sometimes defaults to that, whereas clear everything out, just have a single one and then guaranteed that uh, yeah, it's, it's JSON. Uh, so that's, that's that. and as I say, I've got our book repository, which just uh, uses uh, Ombrico's uh, current database that's defined in your, your web config. And uh, use Petapoco to to basically uh, query the books table, create, delete, uh, get, uh, get all. Uh, and that's where you can see that uh, in this case I just uh, select star. Generally don't use star, but uh, in this case I, I do actually want all the fields uh, returned. And we just do a basic sort uh, for presentation. Uh, so that's the data access site. The last part of the server folder that's worth uh, looking at is the, the tree controller in the, the back office. Uh, so uh, as we saw in uh, an earlier demo, the tree had uh, two nodes in it, uh, one for books and one for cameras. So uh, we create this by deriving from tree controller. And we see this tree is, is for the global trade app. We call the, the tree global trade, which is why you might see global trade slash global trade in uh, some of the URLs and we have a friendly name for it uh, and it's part of the Global Trade plugin. So uh, 
when you create a tree it has two two main collections that you provide uh, menu menu item collections for when you select a node uh, and then the tree nodes themselves uh, don't do a lot with the menu collection at the moment but uh, you, you can add you can add all your your kind of standard buttons uh, that Umbriclaw uses, uh, you know, send to publish, uh, uh, whatever, whatever uh, kind of menu is suitable for for your tree nodes. For for my use, uh, I wanted to have all the functionality within the tabs themselves, uh, rather than as menu actions. Uh, uh, it just works better for me. So then uh, the main method that's used in here is the tree modes where you actually define uh, uh, what, what nodes you want in your, your Mac office. As I say, uh, I just create two tree nodes at the moment. So one called books, give it this name, and one called cameras give it that name and uh, basically when the books tree node is, is selected uh, this is the angular uh, view that uh, that will be uh, uh, called so the books catalog uh, will be responsible for generating uh, the whole tab content to the to the right of the, the tree uh, in the back office. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at that later. Same for the cameras catalog. So if we wanted uh, any more nodes, uh, we'll just add a, an extra tree node in here and as we saw earlier uh, for each of these tree nodes uh, these views will pull back the tab collection that is relevant for them and uh, so as you select a, a tree node you'll see your tab collection and then you'll pick a tab and you have the functionality for that tab displayed that uh, wraps up the server functionality. The client folder contains all the Angular JS files. We'll look in detail at each uh, type of file uh, created in here, but for now we'll just identify the, the main types of files. Uh, there's the Angular JS modules, there's the models. Uh, which is an attempt to strongly type uh, JavaScript models. So, for instance, uh, uh, the C Sharp uh, book class uh, model. Uh, we will have a, a book model in JavaScript, and we'll have a, a book builder factory to return a book model. Uh, so that we keep the client-side models in sync with the back-end uh, C-sharp models. We have a number of resource files uh, which are used to access the back-end book web API that we created uh, in the server-side component uh, of this plugin. We have uh, Angular directives which are used in the back office tabs for maintaining the books. Uh, the directives as we'll see fall into two categories. Uh, one of those directives which we create which are used for scaffolding. So the back end tab has a general umbrical structure and uh, our tab content is wrapped in a number of scaffolding directives so that all the tabs follow the same structure and are consistent also 
is maintaining the, the tabs. Uh, if we want to make general changes in all tabs, it then becomes quite easy by just changing the uh, directive scaffolding. Uh, then there are uh, the other type of directives are those created specifically for individual tabs. So the one we'll, we'll take a look at is the book catalog tab. That uh, has a directive which uh, takes care of all the CRUD operations, so create, update, delete, list, etc. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll see how that's done, and uh, that makes uh, maintaining any any asset like a book or a camera. Uh, quite easy by just uh, just including a, a single directive in a tab and uh, that's your whole crud done for for that type of uh, product so that's directives uh, then we have uh, controllers and views uh, uh, which are uh, uh, just your basic angular components uh, uh, for views, view management. Uh, uh, and we specifically make use of those views and controllers in uh, the dashboard for the plugin. Uh, in the dashboard, we have a welcome screen and we have a, a plugin settings tab. So those kind of things uh, uh, tap into. Uh, views and controllers in the plugin area. Uh, we have some services files created. Uh, I, I make a distinction uh, between services and resources. Resources tend to make use of uh, web API, so involve uh, HTTP requests and uh, services tend to be everything that isn't an http request so in our case uh, uh, we might have some uh, date helpers for uh, generating iso date and times uh, and uh, we also have uh, a lang folder for translation which we covered all that a lib folder for third party libraries and assets folder which uh, contains the the less files uh, I generally develop uh, using less and use a web compiler to automatically generate the CSS and I use gulp to concatenate all the CSS files into a single uh, CSS file which uh, gets put into the, the build uh, assets folder and that's a single CSS file that gets loaded by the plugin so uh, all the CSS is generally available across all the, the back office tabs okay let's take a look at the client folder within our package. As mentioned earlier, the client folder is the main Angular development area and we use a gulp file to process the client folder and generate the build folder which is the, the structure of the plugin that gets copied into the Umbraco website. So we'll take a quick look at the gulp file to show how the conversion of the client folders into the build folders actually happened. Uh, but first we'll, we'll take a quick overview 
of uh, what files are are in uh, the client folder. Uh, so first you start off with the uh, package manifest, which is the the main plugin. Uh, file that uh, Umbrico picks up and sees what constitutes your your plugin. So uh, all the references are into target build app plugin folders. So we can see third party and all the JavaScript files and the CSS. Uh, there's the global trade modules, which again on Braco will, will pick up and see what uh, what your plugin requires in terms of its own modules and what it's dependent on. So the the client folder is largely uh, set up for developers from a developer's perspective. So all the CSS that, that we use, for instance, uh, we have some dashboard tabs and then we have some back office uh, tabs. So any CSS using the dashboard, uh, that, that, there's not a lot, but uh, uh, the logo, center the logo, for instance. Uh, so we, we just create a small less files and uh, I use web, web compiler in Visual Studio just to automatically save them as a CSS file when, uh, when they get modified. And then I use Gulp to pick up all the CSS files and generate a single CSS for the project. So it's in back office. Uh, might have a, a list file, so uh, yeah, there's a, there's a little bit uh, in there. So that's the CSS and images. Uh, I mentioned the media that we use in the plugin, we just bung in there. Uh, filters. Uh, Plugin doesn't really use any filters, but uh, if it does, they all go into the filters module and Gulp will ensure they're all concatenated and wrapped in an FE and generated into a single uh, file in the, in the build directory, the global trade filters. So, that's filters. Lang for language translations, lib for third party libraries, uh, models. So all the models that we that we use uh, we store as individual model files and then uh, we use go to uh, concatenate all those model files and uh, uh, put them into a single JavaScript file. Uh, so that's models and we have uh, under the models folder we have models used for dialogues and we have some factories that just create certain types of models so that they're all pulled into the, the one module. Yeah, we'll look in detail at, at, at some of those factories uh, in a short time. Uh, similar for resources, uh, we can have a folder structure for resources and uh, well, we define small files of, of resources uh, that all get concatenated and put into a single resources file. Same with services, we can define all the individual services. They get concatenated and put into a services uh, module. And then we have the, the views, 
which uh, we uh, we organize uh, according to developer folder structure uh, that, that's suitable for us. Uh, what, what we have for some of views, we have the controller for the view, and then we have the, the view itself. Uh, all the all the views uh, like this in book authors bios HTML get, get put into a single output uh, directory, uh, which is this one, book authors bios. So you'll see all the all the views are put in here and all the directives which are views with a tpl.html get uh, put into the directive subfolder of the, the main views folder in the output build directory. So that, that allows us to have any kind of views folder structure that that we want. So in this case, I've separated the the, the views. There's a there's a view per per tab. Uh, you you may recall there was three tabs on uh, the books uh, the books tree notes. So there was a books catalog. There was a books events, and there was the auto bios. So uh, we have a we have a view and a controller for each of those. Now, if we want to take a look at those in, in details, again, if we were extending the tree, we'd do the same for cameras and any other uh, views. Uh, we have common dialogue views, so that's a delete confirmation, which you've got a, a dialog interface that we use. There's views for the the dashboard and the settings and uh, there's some views associated with directives so there's the the main books crud directive uh, and we'll look at that in detail this is just an overview and scaffolding so for the main framework for these tabs we have uh, panel bodies, we have tabs, we have the drawer buttons at the bottom, and we have a spinner for while we're waiting on on uh, results. So that's the that's the overview of what's in the the client folder, and we'll, we'll, we'll take a quick look at the the gulp file. that uh, transforms the, the content in the, the client folder into the content in the build directory. So this is the gulp file and uh, uh, you can read that by the gulp but Basically, uh, you can pull in uh, a number of add-ins that uh, are relevant to your project. Uh, in this case, uh, you use things like Rimra. Uh, I had to look up that name. It's, uh, it's apparently derived from RM space minus RF, RM minus RF uh, on Unix for recursively deleting files. So Rimra takes care of uh, file deletion. Uh, Concat uh, takes a number of files and uh, concatenates them into one CSS min, uh, minify CSS, uglify, obscures names and things. Uh, uh, I've pulled it in, but uh, I've uncommented its use just as uh, I want to make the output readable uh, while I'm developing. Uh, flatten, uh, basically, uh, uh, you can you can pull in a, a number of files that have all got path prefixes. Flatten basically cuts off the directory part of the file and just leaves you with the file name. So uh, in this file, for instance, uh, all the templates and all the views might be in 
uh, any number of view directories so we pick all them up we bin the, the source directory we take the file name and then we put it into the single view uh, target build directory for those html files and all the directive templates go into the directives uh, subdirectory within the build folder so uh, the way we've got uh, the build file organized is uh, uh, it's just javascript so uh, we see that we're, we're going to take everything from our source directory which is the client folder and the target and bring them into a target which is the build app plugins global trade folder and uh, have a number of higher level uh, targets that uh, uh, so I've got, I've got a dev release which will go into this directory and I've got a live release uh, that, that integrates directly into my Umbrico website on my, my local PC so this is a uh, really slight target so uh, we uh, uh, create a number of tasks and uh, get these appear on the, the, the task runner uh, so uh, what, what is it View Oh, task runner explorer. So in here, all the tasks are listed in the task runner, and you double click to run them. So I've got a build solution which will build uh, the the whole the whole output directory, and I have a build release file which I'll copy straight into my uh, Mongrel website. Okay. Uh, let's get rid of that. But I'll just do a quick uh, quick scan through the, the GOLT file. So uh, CSS is, uh, and uh, what I tend to do is if I, if I have a task that does something, I have a task that undoes it, kind of cleans it up, uh, that way you can kind of clean your whole solution and then uh, regenerate it. Uh, so CSS, for instance, uh, under the runs under the the client folder. So I'll search for any file that uh, that's got dot uh, CSS and basically concatenate all those, minify them, and. Uh, Uh, of them in the destination file, which is uh, the build directory, uh, asset CSS, global treatment.css. So that's CSS taken care of. Uh, filters, similar thing is done. Uh, I'll look for all, all the filters uh, as a dot filter.js file. Uh, or concatenate those or we'll wrap them in a, an iffy uh, to keep them out in the global space global namespace and bung them all into a single global trade filters js directory so that's that same for our controllers exact same process uh, models uh, similar similar uh, only in this case uh, we create an array of uh, source directions we will look for so the models we'll search for all the files that are dot model dot js and all the files that are dot factory dot js so models and factories all end up in global trade dot models dot js uh, directives similar thing uh, all the directives bundled into a directives dot js file uh, templates and uh, templates so that that's all the all the dot tpl dot html files 
uh, are found and then they're flattened so the, the prefix is cut off so you're just left with the individual file names themselves and they're put into the templates uh, destination which in the build directory is this the directory so you can see here all the tpl uh, html files get bunged in there uh, that's uh, doing that single task uh, and then uh, have a number of uh, subtasks so if I, if I know i'm just changing or updating directives uh, i can just uh, refresh the directives in the output directory uh, Resources are the same, all the resource.js files get uh, concatenated, wrapped in an FA and bunged in the global trade resources.js file. Uh, same for services uh, and uh, there is only one modules file so that uh, that gets uh, bumped into the global trade modules destination and the views are the same any html file there's not a template not a directive template will get picked up and bumped into the back office global trade folder which is the one just above the directives and that's uh, that's kind of third party libraries uh, yeah so that's basically a directory copy and the same for language translations and any media uh, and the package manifest itself which uh, we will look forward to see what's in your package uh, and then uh, we have higher level tasks uh, like build solution which just uh, calls all the other tasks to, to build uh, the whole output directory uh, one for cleaning that up and then uh, I can release the dev area or release the live and my highest level task is build, build the solution and then uh, release it into the website uh, and that's uh, that's an overview of, uh, of the, the client uh, client side code angular js modules are created in the globaltrade.modules.js file which we'll take a look at uh, shortly uh, within this file we have the main global trade module we then uh, have separate modules for all the models uh, which get, also includes the factories uh, we have a module for resources a module for services, a module for directives, a module for filters. All the controllers are added directly to the global trade module. Okay, let's take a look at the modules that uh, the plugin uh, creates. So first of all, we'll take a look at the package manifest and we see that uh, there's a global trade modules.js file which uh, identifies all the Angular modules that are, that are created and uh, this package manifest lists those uh, modules so there's one for models filters resources services directives and controllers and if we take a look at the plugins modules file uh, we can see that uh, it creates those angular 
modules here and internal dependencies like resources and services are dependent on the models and uh, the main module for the plugin is the global trade one which uh, requires all the other support modules in the plugin plus uh, some of the umbrical services uh, and uh, third party library energy storage so uh, we tell uh, umbrical package umbrical packages module that uh, uh, is dependent now on our global trade plugin and that will make sure that the other supporting uh, modules are created uh, natural modules files are generated by gulp and as we've seen earlier in the build javascript directory uh, modules are listed as per the package manifest okay let's take a look at the models used by the the plugin uh, Individual models like a book are created in small files with a model.js suffix. All models are concatenated into a single global trade.models.js file via gulp. And that file is the one referenced in the plugin manifest. So th this allows uh, the model folder structure to be whatever the developer wants. Uh, it makes it easy for our maintenance of all the models are an individual file but then for packaging all the models are concatenated into a single model file and that's the one referenced uh, by the package manifest all the models are wrapped in an FA so there's no leakage of names to the global namespace some models worthy of note in this package are the tab collection. Uh, this model is used to build a set of tabs for each tree node in the plugin. There's a dialogue data model that's used to define the interface to the dialogues used for the, uh, for the plugin, e.g. Uh, when the user attempts to delete a book there'll be a confirmation dialog that will display the book name to the user and request confirmation that they're, they're sure that they want to delete that book uh, if the user confirms that the book should be deleted then there's a callback uh, that is called that then makes use of a resource API to actually delete the book. Uh, final model, what they've noticed uh, the book, the book model itself, uh, this is a JavaScript equivalent to the book C sharp uh, Petapoco model class that. Uh, we have uh, in the, the plugin DLL. Let's take a look at the models used in our plugin. Uh, these are all the models that get uh, concatenated into the single globaltrade.models.js file in the, the build directory uh, in the client uh, models folder we have uh, we have the models organized as uh, as suits the, the developer so in this case uh, some of the models that we use are the likes of uh, the book model you may recall from earlier that we have a book 
object, uh, C sharp object uh, that the web API returns. So we uh, we define a book object that uh, that matches that. <coughs> and we'll see here, as I mentioned, uh, with the camel case formatter, all the properties begin with a lower case. Uh, and we have one that matches each of the ones on the server side. So ID, title, published, and price. Yeah. For any model, you can add any other methods that are useful. So in this case, uh, sometimes useful to copy an object. So we have a, a clone method. And then we add that to the models module. So that's one that Another model that we use is the tab collection for each tree node. Uh, each tree node uh, has a, a list of uh, tabs. So we define the properties of a tab, uh, its ID, its name, its URL, whether it's active, whether it's visible, or whether it uh, it reacts to a callback rather than a URL. So this is the, the basic uh, model of a tab. And then we have our tabs collection, uh, which is basically a collection of those tabs. And we have methods on the collection uh, to control tab formation. So we can have uh, add tab, uh, add an action tab which is one with a callback run the URL we can set which tab is active uh, we can hide a tab we can show a tab we can insert a tab uh, etc so again revealing the module just uh, gives you a tab collection and uh, uh, methods to operate on it other type of models that we've got are uh, dialogue models. So into the tabs I configured the uh, delete operations. So there's the uh, delete author bio. Uh, so the dialogue might take uh, uh, author details uh, and the name of the author. Uh, there's a delete book dialogue. Uh, when you delete uh, a book, you get asked to confirm whether uh, you're sure you want to delete it. So uh, for the dialogue, uh, what we do is we pass in the book object uh, that, that we're, we're going to delete and we set up the name property of the book. Uh, all delete dialogues uh, expect a name and a warning property. Uh, war warning is optional. If you don't give it uh, a warning message, then it, it won't display the warning. But they all expect name. And uh, for this book, I tend to pass in uh, the book that's been deleted because the whole dialogue data will be uh, passed back uh, into your controller uh, callback method uh, if the user confirms they want to delete uh, uh, the book in this case. So the book would have the ID and then the callback is uh, able to extract the ID and make a resource request to the server to delete that item. That's, uh, that's the gist of the, the models. Uh, in the next slide, we'll, we'll take a look at the, the, the factories that uh, make use of these models. Let's take a look at the factories that we create in Angular. Uh, the individual factories like a book builder 
I've created again small files with a factory.js suffix. All factories are concatenated into a single globetrade.models.js file, uh, i.e. Uh, into the existing models file that we discussed in the previous slide. Uh, this is uh, because the factories are mainly used to create models. And as mentioned before, it's the models.js file that's used uh, in the package manifest. Some factories worthy of note are the generic model builder factory. This is used to translate all resource JSON files into st structured JavaScript model data. Uh, the book builder factory will make use of the model builder factory and return book assets return from uh, the book resource. There's a tabs factory which returns the tab collection for each uh, tree node uh, in the back back office uh, at the moment there's two tree nodes defined one for books and one for cameras uh, so books will have a factory method to return its set of tabs cameras will have another tabs factory method to return the tabs for uh, the cameras uh, in this way uh, the back end is easily extendable so if we add more nodes to the tree we then just add more uh, methods to the tabs factory to identify the tabs that we want to create for the, the new tree nodes Okay, let's take a look at the, the model factories that uh, we have in our plugin. We start with the generic model builder factory. Uh, as you can see, we've uh, uh, lifted this from uh, Scott Allen. Uh, and this is a generic model builder. Uh, you pass in the type of object that uh, you want to build and uh, from your web API JSON uh, the object that you want is constructed from the JSON so the generic model builder has got the, the main transform method and that will take a JSON result and uh, generate uh, the object that you want uh, per your constructor. So in my case, I might pass in a, a book, the book model that we uh, looked at earlier. Uh, this transform method will check whether the JSON is a, an array or just a single object. If it's not an array, it will return an array of the object type that you want. Otherwise, it will just return a single uh, object so that's the generic model builder that uh, the other factories use so if we take a look at the book builder factory uh, as you can see this factory makes use of the generic model builder and also the, the book model uh, so the constructor is a book and uh, basically when we make a web API call uh, we'll transform it and uh, this is how we do it uh, this one is slightly special in that, uh, in that we do the standard standard transformation uh, but uh, we also do a little bit of uh, helper model creation uh, with this one uh, we have a display format uh, publish format 
that uh, we display in uh, the back end tab, so day, month, year, spell out. So we make that as an additional property uh, just for ease of presentation. And uh, that's what's going on here. So uh, again, it's similar to the generic model builder. We see if we've got uh, an array of books, if we have, then we generate an array of books and return them. Otherwise, we, uh, we just uh, we just uh, return the one object, and in this case, uh, format date string, no time. So uh, we have UTC dates that come across the wire. We bin the time and just uh, and just uh, format the date. Uh, incidentally, uh, uh, the plugin tends to work with uh, UTC uh, dates. Uh, JavaScript uh, by default will take account of your local time zone. So, for instance, I'm, I'm uh, British summer time at the moment. And what happens is uh, midnight British summer time is one hour ahead of uh, UTC. So, whenever you send a date back to the server, the date will be converted to UTC time. So, the result of that is uh, yeah, today's day actually gets sent back as 11 p.m. of yesterday. So when you reread the date from the server, you find that uh, uh, it would be one day out and display as yesterday. So uh, whenever I read dates in, I store them as uh, UTC so that when I, I get them back. Uh, <laughs> the date that you entered is uh, the date that you see. So uh, that's what this uh, uh, date handling business is uh, largely to do with. So that's the book builder. Then there's the uh, tabs factory. So what we can see the tabs factory is requires the tab collection and uh, there's been a factory we see down the bottom that uh, we create the book list tabs and the camera list tabs so the book list tabs uh, we get a new tabs collection we add three tabs to it one for the catalog tab one for the events and one for the author bias uh, so in the books, got the catalog, the events, and the author bias. Uh, and if you look at the footer of the screen, you can see the, the URLs that are, uh, are used that match with what's in the, the back end. So that's these URLs that the last parameter uh, is not currently used, but uh, could help you in uh, the maintenance of that, that tab. Uh, so we have uh, the books tabs and then we have the cameras uh, tabs. Again, that's catalog special offer and campaign. So catalog special offers and campaigns. And that's the tabs factory. So that uh, that largely covers the factories that that we use. Let's take a look at the resources that are used by the plugin. Individual resources, like a book resource, for instance, are created in small files with a resource.js suffix. All resources are concatenated into a single globaltrade.resources.js file via gulp and that file is one referenced in the plugin manifest. All the resources are wrapped in an FA, so it's no like each again of anything into the global namespace. The only resource used at the moment is the book resource and it performs all the CRUD operations for the book assets. Uh, so that's your create, uh, uh, list all, 
update, delete, etc. Uh, and that's it for resources. Let's take a look at the resources the plugin uses. Uh, at the moment, the only real resource of relevance is the book resource. Uh, this resource makes uh, HTTP calls uh, to the books API controller, which we saw earlier in the, the set that we're looked at the server side. Uh, so it exposes an API that our resource will tap into. So for instance, uh, uh, if we take a look at the get all method, then we'll see that the base URL to plug into our books API controller is umbrical back office global trade books API. You get the books API from the name of the controller as well as the, the area. Uh, so that's the base URL for all the, the methods. Then uh, we just expect to call the methods that are exposed on the controller. So we'll see that get all uh, calls in the repository and returns an innumerable list of books. So the resource uh, will handle that. So what we see is that generally all methods will uh, make use of the umbrical request helper which takes care of making an HTTP call and then allows you to specify an error message if it fails and that will get bubbled up uh, to the user interface in the, the back end to give the admin user some help with uh, what's going wrong. Uh, so in, that, in this case, get all, uh, we're getting all books. So we use the base URL, add on the method that we want, specify as a get method, and uh, the umbilical request alpha returns a promise. So we bung on the, the then call to pick up the data. And when we looked at the factory, we saw that we had a book builder factory that transforms the, the data. So uh, this will give us a, a, an array of books or single books, there's only one. And that's, that's what we uh, return to the, the caller. Uh, and we'll see how the caller handles this uh, later on. So all of the methods defined in the book API controller that we want to use uh, uh, on the, the, the back office tab, uh, we define in here. So create, we'll tap into the create method. We'll make a push request, pass an item that we want to create. We're updating a book, we'll call the update method, pass in the uh, the item that, that is to be updated and if we want to delete a book we'll call the delete method uh, using our RESTful interface we'll just bung on the ID of the, the book that, that we want to delete and we'll send that using the delete verb and that's uh, basically your resources. Let's take a look at the directives used by the plugin. Uh, individual directives are creating files with a directive.js suffix and they have uh, matching uh, templates with a suffix uh, .tpl.html. All directives are concatenated into a single global trade.directives.js file. Via Gulp, that file is one referenced in the plugin manifest. All the directives are wrapped in an FA, so no leakage of names to the global space. Directive templates, uh, as I say, are all identified by .tpl.html suffix, and Gulp ensures they're all copied to the plugin directive folder at uh, build time. 
So that would be the app plugins, global trade back office, global trade directives folder. Uh, and that's where all the URLs all reference the directive. Uh, directives fall into two categories. There's general scaffolding directives. Uh, these are used for the back office panel structure. So that will be the uh, for the tabs, the panel body, the panel header, uh, the panel drawer, i.e. the bot, the buttons at the bottom of the tab. Uh, so generally the scaffolding will keep a consistent view across all the all the tabs and make it easy to change the structure of all the tabs if, uh, if that's needed. There's also a general spinner directive that's used to display uh, an hourglass type of item uh, when waiting for a resource result uh, from the server uh, to assist with a clean update uh, of the screen. Uh, the second category of uh, directives are those directives that are tab specific. So in our case, uh, there's one for the books catalog tab uh, called GT Books. Uh, GT being the global trade books for the book catalog. And this single directive is used to perform all the CRUD operations for the book assets. So within a single tab, uh, we can list the books, we can add a new book, we can edit an existing book, or we can delete a book. If we choose a delete operation, then there'll be a, a, a pop-up uh, dialog to confirm that we want to delete the book. And if we say yes, the uh, book will be deleted and the tab will update to show the the book gone. Okay, uh, let's uh, take a look at some higher level functionality you now of the plugin. So the directives that are uh, used to create the content of the tabs that you see. So what we'll start off with is the directives used to create a simple tab content. Uh, in this case, I've, I've done that kind of hello world type tab. Uh, but this tab will make use of uh, the GT tabs directive, which creates the, the tabs. The pa GT panel body, which takes care of the, the main content area. Uh, GT drawer, which takes care of uh, standard uh, footer on the tabs, and uh, GT hello, which is just a simple Angular uh, directive, just to show that uh, the tab is is working. Uh, so once we look at uh, those directives, then we'll take a look at uh, the catalog which uses all the same directives, except uh, instead of the, the dummy GT hello, this uh, uh, panel body area is uh, generated using the GT books directive. Uh, apart from the GT books, uh, uh, it's the same as the events tab with the hello world directive just replaced by the, the books catalog. So that's how we uh, we fill out all the tabs and uh, if you have a look all the all the other tabs that I've I've created are are just uh, sample tabs with uh, the hello world uh, one included to show that uh, they are functional. So I will take a look at the events tab now from a code perspective. 
there. What we have is the book events HTML. Uh, it has its own controller and this is a standard layout for a lot of the tabs. What we'll see is there's a there's a header element. Uh, it's a lot of HTML just for displaying the uh, events, but uh, that's just following what uh, what uh, what's there. Uh, so then I have uh, my GT tabs uh, directive, uh, which simply takes care of uh, listing out the three tabs and selecting the events as the active one. The tabs collection is picked up by the controller which taps into the tabs uh, uh, factory that we uh, covered earlier. So uh, that takes care of the header and the tabs. Then we have the GT panel body which uh, which is basically the main content area for the tab and uh, we have GT drawer which takes care of the footer on the tab and responsible for uh, displaying any buttons relevant and this events tab uh, just makes use of a, another world uh, type directive uh, just to show that uh, basically the Angular is working, the tabs working, directives are being pulled in and essentially from a tabs perspective uh, everything seems to be working. So uh, we'll uh, We'll take a look at, uh, at the directives from the simplest uh, to the more complicated. So that hello directive, as you saw, all it does is uh, display an input box with a name and says hello to you. So. That's that. There's uh, there's not not a lot going on in this one. Uh, again, the URL to the the template, and we're just looking for a name uh, to to be given, uh, and that uh, that displays that. So uh, that's just a set simple content for an event. Uh, the next generic uh, or scaffolding directive that we have is the tabs. Uh, so we've got tabs and that basically just draws a, a list of, of umbrical tabs uh, for all the items that we add in the tabs collection. Uh, there'll be one of them that will be marked as active. And we have two options for listing a tab, depending on whether a URL is configured or a callback is configured. Uh, for our tabs, they're all URL configured. Uh, so that's uh, three tabs. That's that's these these ones. Uh, so that's the and expects uh, a tabs collection uh, to be given. Yeah, you can change the width of the, the tabs. So I currently don't. And the name of the directive, again, I use the prefix uh, GT uh, tab. And that's, uh, that's, the, that's the tabs. Uh, we've got the books event controller. We have a, a look in that. Uh, what we can see is the controller. It sets up the tabs from the tabs factory, and you'll see that method create book 
list tabs which we covered earlier. We'll just return the three tabs and we indicate that the events tab is the active one. Uh, that's all there is generally in, uh, in all the controllers for the tabs. Uh, they basically just get the tabs to display and set one active. So the whole template is consistent across all tabs. Uh, so that's the, if we take a look at the panel body, uh, th th this is basically just uh, uh, using a kind of master page for, for tabs. If we look at the panel body, uh, it's just got some standard uh, Umbrico format and layout uh, that uh, that is used, and then the, the content is just uh, transcluded into uh, into the body of it. Uh, one item worthy of note here is uh, we have a spinner uh, directive which uh, shows a spinny wheel uh, while we are. Uh, preloading data. So in our controller we can set pre values loaded to be false while we're uh, going across the wire getting all the data that's relevant to the, uh, to the tab. And when we, we have all the data we set that true uh, and then your tab will tab content will display. When it's false there's a spinner it just gives the user some feedback uh, as to that your tab's busy uh, and we can see uh, the spinner directive is just uh, uh, while we don't have any free values loaded we just show a loader gif and just spins so that's that uh, so that's the, the panel body and then we have uh, the drawer, which is uh, which is basically the, the footer of the page. Uh, again, we transcript those buttons that uh, are relevant to the the tab, uh, and that's the. That's the main kind of scaffolding. Uh, so if we look at a typical tab, we've got the uh, we've got the header, the tabs, the panel body, the drawer, and then the directives that fill in the content. And say this is our hello world uh, one, which is uh, used in all the other tabs other than uh, catalog. Now the catalog uh, well let's take a look at that that uh, that's gonna be different. So the books catalog uh, we have a slightly slightly different uh, layout uh, we have the same header, uh, so we show the title and we show the tabs. The body will change slightly. Uh, in the previous one, uh, you might. Uh, in the previous one, uh, we made use of the the panel body. Uh, but we've actually moved that into the books directive uh, primarily because that books directive has got multiple display modes uh, so that uh, we tend to display one type of panel uh, GT panel body at a time uh, depending on what screen mode we're in uh, we'll take like so for instance uh, uh, when we enter the, the books catalogue, uh, the first mode 
to have a look at it. Uh, the first mod that we're in is list mode, basically, so you get a list of the, the books. But then the uh, screen has a, a create mode that you can cancel out of, and it has a, an edit mode. They all have their own uh, panel bodies and their own uh, uh, panel drawers. Uh, the, uh, the, which was necessitated because the, the directive has multiple form elements and uh, you need the submit button to be contained within the form in order for things to fire properly. So uh, I ended up uh, multiple form definitions uh, that contain panel drawers and so based on what screen mode we're in there's one panel body displayed at a time uh, so that's that's what's going on there so we take a look at that that's why we see the, the top title doesn't change but then we have our books directive and that does all the the CRUD operations. So we'll we'll take a look. Uh, so well, what we've got here is uh, a slight digression there. In order to keep the drawer at the bottom of the tab. Uh, Depending on how you wrap your directives, you can lose the CSS context of uh, display flex column. Uh, so what this class does is it says, okay, this div, if it's in a flex column, grow it to the max and then start a new flex column. And what that, the effect of that is that uh, the main body will expand as much as possible, uh, leaving just enough room for the drawer, so the drawer always fits at the, the bottom. So that's this this part here. Uh, so I'm going to switch to different modes, there's different buttons up here. Uh, but uh, the flex and grow, make sure that uh, the drawer panel stays at the, the bottom. So we'll take a look at the, the HTML and then we'll take a look at the, the directive uh, controller. So what we have here is if we've got a list mode or details mode, then we show a panel body like we did in the earlier example. In this case, uh, we have some header buttons, create and refresh, create book and refresh. And then we have an umbrical table, uh, we just use the umbrical classes and that styles it very similar. So we, we list all the books and we have the ability to edit, show details or delete the book. So that's this table here with the umbrical styling. Uh, uh, you get the effects and you get the operations available on each book. So that's those uh, those books. And right. So that's the panel body and. We list the table if we're in list mode. If we're in details mode, the table will be hidden and a details mode will show. So that's uh, details mode is if we show the details. Uh, this is designed for objects with uh, a lot more properties than this, but if you get complicated uh, objects, then you might show a summary in the grid and then have a details mode to, to see every property. So uh, 
we're, in, we're still inside the, the panel body and uh, that's the details mode so we show all the, the individual items there and we've got the the drawer for details mode uh, just shows a button to cancel out the details mode and go back to list mode so that's your that's your first uh, panel body then we've got a form for when we're in create mode uh, we list all the properties that uh, we want to create a book so we don't need to list the ID that's taken care of by Peter Porco uh, when we insert it into the, the database uh, so we uh, we ask for a title which is required, we ask for a price which uh, ensures the uh, in currency format and we ask for a date uh, that's required, you uh, should really uh, bring a, a calendar pop up uh, on this but uh, it's just, uh, it's just uh, an input uh, at the moment and uh, uh, oh, oddly enough, uh, initially I'd use type equals date and you get Chrome's uh, pop-up calendar, but uh, the version of Angular 1.1.5 uh, is by Umbraco doesn't support uh, input date, so uh, uh, for now I've just uh, uh, taken, uh, taken text. So that's the create and then it has its own drawer where you can cancel or you can actually save and notice that uh, the actual form will would, would only allow the submit to happen if the, the form is valid uh, and then we call the, the save method. The other form that we've got uh, it uses its own panel body is if we're in edit mode we then switch the screen into edit and we allow the, the book to be edited and again in edit mode we have uh, cancel or if it's valid uh, we actually save uh, the only other item that we didn't cover was uh, we made a call to delete if we, if we want to uh, delete a book so we look at the, the controller that, that goes with the directive and we'll, we'll see the functionality that goes with books so, uh, so here we see in the directives module we had books gt books uh, that was the main uh, HTML which we uh, we just looked at. Uh, the book directive makes use of uh, dialogues for our deletion and Umbrico's dialog service uh, makes use of our book model and the book resource. Uh, when we first come in we get all the books and then uh, assign them to the scope and the books get bound uh, in this mode uh, to the table that I guess displayed so uh, the screen has four modes of operation uh, four modes uh, list uh, where we just list the existing books where we're in edit mode, where we're in details mode or where, whether we're in creep mode uh, maybe a better way of doing this but uh, I just set up flags to easily show and hide uh, parts of, the, parts of the, the tab based on what mode we're in so I, I, I can just compare edit mode with the uh, detailed mode, create mode, list mode, uh, maintenance mode etc uh, to see what uh, what part of the directive should be displayed 
and uh, yeah, I'll just go top to bottom here. So uh, if we want to edit a book, uh, we switch the screen into edit mode and we take our copy of the book being edited. Uh, we don't want the main book being updated as the user changes it uh, in case they cancel out. So uh, basically, basically uh, we take a copy of the book, work on that. Uh, if the user decides to to save it then it goes to the server, we refresh the screen from the server content and the updated book will be displayed. Uh, we could take shortcuts and just update the book directly on the screen but uh, I want to make sure that uh, uh, the screen actually reflects what's been saved in the server. So that's edit a book, uh, creating a book. Uh, we, uh, we use a new book, uh, we set the ID to zero, which Petapoco uses uh, to assign an ID on insert. Uh, we set no price and no title. Uh, we just set a default publish date to today. Uh, and the uh, publish format, which we uh, displayed on screen. Details, we switch the screen into details mode and we take a copy of the book that we want to display the details. If we're in edit, we allow cancel, which switches us back to the list mode, and clears out any edited book. Details cancel again back to list mode, cancel out any book being edited. If we're creating a new book, we switch back to list and we cancel any new book. Uh, edit save, uh, we put the screen back into list mode and uh, as I mentioned earlier we stick to UTC dates uh, to make sure that uh, <laughs> the actual date that we enter comes back to us after we uh, save it to the server. So uh, we set the publish date uh, based on what the users typed in and uh, we make sure it's UTC. Uh, so edit save, make use of the book resource. We call the update method, passing in the book. Uh, if that call successful, then we re-get all our books and reassign them to the scope so they display on screen. Uh, again, a new book save, switch back into list mode. Sort out the dates per edit and we call our book resource create method passing in the new book and when we get uh, a response from the server then uh, we'll uh, get the new collection of books and bind them to the scope for displaying the table on list mode. Uh, delete book. This is uh, slightly different to the other button clicks in that uh, this makes use of the, uh, a dialog, confirmation dialog. So first of all we get the dialog uh, model for deleting a book. Uh, so that requires a book to be assigned the one we want to delete and the name for a presentation on uh, the delete dialog. So we click delete you'll see, are you sure you want to delete the old man the C uh, and this operation cannot be undone so we can cancel that or we can carry on. Uh, so in here the create delete book dialog data has a, a default warning set up for any model created so we just need to provide the book and uh, the title we make use of uh, Omrico servers to open the dialog, which we define in, uh, in this file here, and we cause the dialog to be shown automatically. 
we have our call back and we set up which is underscore which is this delete book uh, dialog confirmation and we pass in the dialog data uh, for displaying the dialog and for pass back to our callback so we see in our delete book dialog confirmation we get the dialog data back we extract the book and we make use of the book resource delete book method passing in the id and that uh, resource call returns then we get all the books again and we assign to the books collection on our scope to remove the book from the screen uh, and that's it the delete button on our main list view of the table so that's this here uh, just calls into the delete book dialog pops up the dialog waits for a confirmation and then uh, deletes the book using the book resource and then updates the screen display and that's your your books directive and that's that for directives let's take a look at the controllers that we have in the plugin individual controllers are created in files with a controller.js suffix we have a controller per tab all controllers are concatenated into a single global trade.controllers.js file via GUILT and that is the one referenced in the plugin manifest all the controllers are wrapped in the NIFI so there's no linkage of names to the global namespace all controllers are added to the global trade module uh, all the controllers follow a namespace uh, pattern which is global trade dot back office dot name of the controller with a controller suffix and if we take a look at uh, an example controller which would be the uh, books catalog controller so uh, we have the book the books node in the tree selected and the first tab uh, for the books is the catalog which maintains all the books so the books catalog controller will be responsible for uh, using the tabs factory to get a list of the tabs for the uh, for the book for the books node in the tree uh, and then set the catalog tab as the active one uh, it, uh, this controller will also be responsible for syncing with the tree in this case I will just highlight the books node that was selected in the tree uh, thereafter uh, uh, this tab will defer to the GT Books Directive, which actually takes care of maintaining the books resources. So that's the, the pattern that, uh, that follows across all the tabs in the back office. We have a controller that basically sets the active tab for the tree node, and then we defer to uh, a directive to actually perform the, the guts of what the tabs functionality actually is okay let's take a look at the views that uh, that we use in the package uh, these are all identified by html suffix or tpl.html suffix uh, for the, the views used by uh, directives uh, all these views go into the uh, uh, back office uh, plugin folder, uh, which is app plugins global trade back office global trade. There's a subfolder in there called directives, and all the tpl.html files will uh, be located there. 
uh, gulp ensures that as the build folder structure is generated, all the views are located in the, the right place. Uh, now let's look at uh, how those views are targeted. There's, uh, uh, they get targeted by the back office tree and also uh, in the dashboard config. In the back office tree, uh, there's a tree controller. As you create a tree node, you have to specify a route for the view, the main view to be uh, uh, visited when that tree node is clicked. So that route will have a, a global trade slash global trade slash whatever view you want to target, in this case, uh, books catalog. That will relate to a physical file in the app plugin slash global trade slash back office slash global trade slash books catalog dot html file. Uh, the plugin has a dashboard which is controlled by the dashboard.config file. There's two tabs identified in there. One's a welcome tab and the other's a settings tab. Now the dashboard config just expects a, a full URL. So uh, slash app plugin slash global trade slash back office slash global trade slash settings dot HTML. Uh, this is the same physical file location as per the back office tree. It's just the views are referred to uh, using a different uh, format. Not related to views, but uh, uh, the third type of URL that's used in the plugin are uh, the web API URLs. Now in the plugin we have uh, uh, the books API controller, uh, which is referenced in the uh, resource by using the URL slash umbrico slash back office slash global trade slash books api and then whatever method uh, you want to target in the web api okay let's take a look at the filters used by the plugin uh, there's none that are actually necessary for this uh, plugin but uh, i've included a sample filter uh, just as most uh, large projects will have their own set of filters, so uh, the infrastructure is in place uh, to have them. Uh, all the filters are identified by .filter.js and uh, they're all concatenated into globaltrade.filters.js and have their own module. And that's identified in the package manifest. Let's take a look at the services used by the plugin. Uh, all these services are identified by service.js files. They're all concatenated into a single services module, uh, globaltrade.services.js, which is uh, referenced in the package manifest. Services are different to resources in that uh, resources uh, have all the HTTP uh, web API calls in them. Uh, any support uh, services that are not HTTP related will go in to a services file. Uh, so things like uh, date utilities that we support, say, ISO uh, date translations. Uh, we put them in our service uh, file uh, for using the plugin and uh, anything along those lines. Three of the remaining folders that are created in the package are Lang, Lib, and Assets. Lang contains the translations for supported languages but we're only supporting English at the moment in this uh, plugin. Uh, lib 
contains third party products, uh, use ng storage, so uh, that JavaScript file gets uh, pulled in there. And assets contains our plugin CSS uh, in less files, and the media used by the plugin. Uh, at the moment, the only media we use is uh, a welcome image uh, in the dashboard welcome tab. To support the plugin, there's a couple of Umbrico website changes that uh, were manually made. Uh, and they were uh, the location of the plugin icon. Uh, so when you create a plugin, you can actually use uh, you can use a class from uh, a fonts a fonts library, or uh, it supports the old way where you have a system tray type icon. Uh, and for this plugin, I've chosen to to use uh, uh, an image, a tree image. Uh, so that I could uh, display my website logo in the back office plugin. So uh, if you want to do that, then you have to put the file into the Umbrico images tray folder. Uh, the second change that uh, I manually made in the Umbrico website was I edited the dashboard config. Uh, to add the dashboard for the plugin. So this is when you click on the, the plugin, uh, you'll see the dashboard initially, and that has two tabs. One's a welcome screen, and others are global settings for the plugin. Uh, so I manually entered those into the dashboard config. Uh, if you're going to package your, your plugin for general consumption then in the package creation you would create a couple of actions that would uh, that would create the dashboard content for you but in my case it's uh, the plugin is primarily for my e-commerce site and so I'm not actually creating a package for general consumption so the edit to the dashboard config got my uh, plugin dashboard up and running with minimal effort okay let's uh, consider consumption of the plugin now that we've uh, created a number of books that we want to sell on our e-commerce site how do we go about incorporating those books into the front end? The first thing we look at is content configuration. Uh, the way I've got my site organized is each page uh, can have a, a number of sections of content added to it. So for instance, a carousel section, tab section and accordion section uh, what I've done for the books is uh, I've created a doc type which represents a book section uh, that book section doc type uh, is mapped to a razor template for the books section uh, that razor template uh, taps into the book repository which was used by the books web API that, uh, that the back end taps into so what I did was uh, the back end web API controller uh, implements uh, an interface the books repository inter interface and uh, the front end will tap into that books repository uh, to get access to the list of methods of, for instance, uh, get all books. 
and uh, so the, the razor file for that section will get the books and then uh, present them in this case in a table for uh, offering as products for the user to add to the basket in terms of uh, content consumption by the user uh, as I say the book section gets added to our books content page uh, that books content page is added in the menu uh, as, a, as a books page so the user will come into the site uh, look at the menu and select books and the books that we've configured by the plugin in the back end will then be offered uh, on the front end okay now we've seen that the plugin can create a set of books uh, we now need to consider how to consume uh, those books on uh, the front end so let's uh, let's take a, a look at that uh, so what we have is in our menu we've configured a book url uh, that displays this screen and we can see the, the list of books is the same as configured in our uh, our back office uh, so how do we get the books into the front end so what we do is uh, in the content section of our site uh, uh, this is just the way I organize mine uh, what I have for a site is I have a site configuration node with global settings in it uh, one of those is the header section where I define my header menu so under the products we'll see there's a new URL uh, for the books products that we've uh, that we want to display so if we if we go to that books books page uh, we'll see our uh, all my content pages uh, tend to have our page sections container created uh, automatically whenever a new content page is created uh, what that allows is i i create sections uh, page sections and then any page can have any combination of sections so as you can see on the screen there i have a section to bring in an accordion a carousel uh, contact form uh, errors uh, for development uh, feature products for my other t-shirts uh, uh, a footer section a grid section so you could have multiple columns uh, you can have a, a new header section which would uh, replace the central header menu uh, section for an iframe uh, section for our sitemap uh, sitemap gets generated automatically there's a tab section and a text section uh, all content pages get a text section created automatically so you'll see under here the books page that I've created has a title and text and then a, a book section underneath so uh, we'll take a look at that uh, title and text basically you can set the title for the the page books and offer and then you can put some text underneath uh, this case it's it's not relevant uh, i add other features so you can control the size of the text uh, whether it's centered uh, whether it's a main title so we'll get an h1 uh, or whether you want to hide the title and just show some text uh, and again for the text you can have a uh, text size where it's centered height uh, and for those kind of things i 
allow animation so they can pop in from the left or down or down or what have you but uh, I don't use that often some pages uh, it, it can be quite effective so so that's just uh, the title all on display is book, books on offer uh, by that the next part and I created a new document type for displaying the, the, the books which was this book section and giving it a template uh, book section so you can view it and look at it or you can look at it in Visual Studio uh, Visual Studio with a kind of highlighting might be a bit, uh, bit better so for this uh, book section uh, I make use of the client dependency uh, within MVC uh, let's get handy facilities for injecting a CSS and JavaScript file so we have the CSS for this uh, book section and uh, I, I think the JavaScript's uh, blank but uh, I, th I tend to have this uh, is standard on a lot of the sections so it uh, easily accommodates any uh, script functionality. Uh, so what we what this template does is it taps into the reusable books repository that the plugin used through the books web API. Uh, so the data access is reusable and uh, like we've seen in the plugin it gets all the all the books for display on the catalog tab uh, we want to display all them uh, within this section so all my sections for a kind of pattern page section uh, they all have so that you can have uh, uh, margins between sections etc and it uh, helps you with the formatting uh, this one has our book section so I can uh, control the CSS just to this section and it's in my bootstrap bootstrap container so if you if you look at this uh, the head and the footer are, are fluid uh, the the whole page is flexed such that the body will extend as much as possible to make sure that your footer is always at the bottom so if you have uh, short pages then they'll fill up the browser rather than have that footer right up the screen uh, so uh, in our case the the book section is this part here uh, below the text title and text section which finishes there so book offers and what's contained in there is what's handled by the by this template so we check if there's any books and then uh, we create a panel which is the the book offers so it just looks like a panel a table within the panel uh, put the book offers there panel body becomes a table which we have striped and hovered uh, and hover I just uh, use the same color as the, the type panel title uh, so we list the, the title the price and an action button to buy and then for every book in the collection which is bung out a table roll show the title format is price and uh, add a button there to encourage them to buy add to basket uh, the add to basket functionality isn't integrated at the moment but uh, i just wanted to to show how the, the books could be uh, uh, brought to the, the front end and uh, uh, included in your, your offering. Uh, that's it for uh, content integration. Well, we'll come to the end of this course and uh, I hope you enjoyed what you saw. The course has shown you 
how your number go will plug in to maintain a list of books for sale on an e-commerce site can be created and consumed by a content page. The course covered creation of the plugin DLL to create the new global trade section and its tree content, the dashboard content, and the web API for maintaining the books resources. Also covered the Angular JS required for the plugin tabs. The tree controller and the tabs factory uh, allow for the plugin to be easily expanded to allow other types of product uh, catalogs to be added. Uh, uh, and I'll give an example cameras, uh, but you can add anything you like. Uh, it's simply a case of adding an extra tree node, configuring the, the tab collection for that tree node, and then impl implement the uh, Angular directives for the functionality of those new tabs. And that's it. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.